um, my name's Carol Donaldson um, and I am beginning to do some video blogs or vlogs as I've been told they're called um, which has been suggested to me by a few friends in the last few weeks so I always have this theory that if three people um, suggest something to you you should probably go ahead and do it I don't know if it's a good theory or not but it is a theory so here we are doing my first vlog um, and I thought I'd come to um, so I should say uh, I had a book published in 2017 on the marshes um, by a little toller and I thought that I should probably begin my first blog at the place that I began and ended my book um, which was St Mary's Church in Lower Higham near Gravesend in Kent um, and then we're going to take a walk out across the uh, the marshes um, towards the Thames and with an attempt at seeing Betty the Beluga which I haven't had a lot of luck at so far but we will see we never know when our luck will change so this is St Mary's Church um, and this is where Charles Dickens daughter married Wilkie Collins son I think that I've got that correct um, I don't think it was the happiest of marriages because supposedly according to uh, extensive reading then that night his daughter oh no Charles Dickens that night after his daughter had married Wilkie Collins son I don't know what she was doing with her father that night because you think she might have been with Wilkie Collins son um, but supposedly her father that night was found by the maid, it's always a maid isn't it, down on his knees weeping into his daughter's skirt saying what have I done? I don't know what he'd done but he hadn't been the best of husbands and so possibly he hadn't been the best of fathers either. Um, and I do believe that Wilkie Collins' son was gay so it clearly wasn't a match that was going to lead to much happiness for either one of them. So I came here at the start and the end of my book and at the end I actually slept in here the night um, and I slept on the floor here next to the turtle stove and under the statue of the Virgin Mary um, and it felt like a really beautiful place to wake up in. Um, there were owls calling outside at night. Um, and when I woke up here in the morning, all this beautiful white plaster um, was lit up by the light and sparrows were tweeting outside on the headstones and it was just, yeah, a lovely place to wake up in. So this is a really special place for me. Um, but it hasn't been that great for all women. Um, so there is a, a bit of a racy story associated with St Mary's. Um, so next door to St Mary's there used to be an abbey, the Abbey of St Sulpice um, and um, the abbey was doing quite well for itself and they had um, the upkeep of a causeway that led from Higham out towards the Thames um, which was really busy in those days, it was a popular crossing spot um, there was a lot of travellers and the causeway was really necessary because the Thames would have flooded the area quite regularly um, and it was full of mosquitoes and they were kind of bandit country um, so the nuns would have charged travellers for going out across the causeway but they were also responsible for the upkeep of the causeway and then I think it was like 1290 something 1293 maybe um, there was a huge flood and the flood swept the causeway away and the nuns then were responsible for repairing it but they didn't have the money and so then the fortunes of the abbey began to fall away and then I think it's about 15 something or other, sorry, not great my dates, um, there's a new vicar that comes to St Mary's, Edward Sterepa, I don't forget his name, and nor did those women, because by that point the nuns, um, the abbey, there's only four nuns in it and an ancient um, abbess who is responsible for them. 
And I think the abbess must die because then um, one of the nuns, Anchoretta Unglethorpe, top name, um, she became the uh, abbess of the abbey. Um, but she was a bit of a girl, I'm afraid, because she um, was found to be stealing funds from the chest, the parish chest, where they would have kept all the um, coppers, presumably that the parishioners would have given in, and probably some of the um, gold and silver plate that the church had. So this is, I believe, the actual chest that Anchoretta Unglethorpe um, would have stolen the money from. This is the parish chest, and presumably she would have had a key for it. But then Edward Sterapa, mm, he is, there was rumours circulating that he was keeping company with Anchoretta. Um, and not only keeping company with Anchoretta, but it turned out there was an inquiry and the um, local woman who acted as a midwife, she gave evidence that Edward Sterapa had had his way with three of the four remaining nuns. And um, two of them, I think, had actually had children by him. And so she'd been the midwife at these births. And it was obviously a huge scandal, the fact that I'm still talking about it. Where are we now? 500 years later, almost. Um, it, it's still known, this story. So, um, yeah, I think uh, the nuns were all dismissed and the abbey closed. And we don't know what happened to Edward Stirriper, which leads me to think that he got away with it. And really, there were lots of reports at the time that the nuns had really tried. They'd asked for a wall to be built around the abbey to keep him out. So he was obviously very persistent, and they had tried to reform their ways. Um, but he was obviously very persistent, and who knows? He might have forced himself on them. We don't know. It's 500 years later, but Edward Stirriper is clearly having it away with quite a lot of the nuns and not a man to be trusted, and certainly not a man to be a vicar. So this is where Edward Stirriper would have given his sermons from this pulpit. So this, I think, is a medieval pulpit. Oh, and a few months ago, there was actually a straw man, and there with the nuns would have sat looking up at Edward, the old fox. I have found Edward Sterapa hiding in the alcove. There's no hiding Edward Sterapa. Before we take off, before we set off on our walk, um, I've made camp in one of the pews. Um, today we have homemade lentil and sweet potato soup and a cheese sandwich with um, some lemony chutney that's so uh, lemony it makes your eyes hurt. Still, it's quite tasty with cheese. <laughs>